Good morning and welcome to St. Paul United Methodist Church Service under the leadership of Dr. Reverend Richard L. Stryker III. We are located on 1500 6th Avenue North, Birmingham, Alabama 35203. Our phone number is 205-252-3236. We pray something said or done during the service will be a blessing to you and give you peace. Good morning, church family and friends on this beautiful second Sunday in Lent as we continue to examine ourselves and fast from those distractions that prevent us from serving God in spirit and in truth. Now, those who are able, may we now stand for the call to worship and read responsibly. Do we dare place our trust in God? God has promised to be with us and to guide us. Are we willing to continue on the journey even when we don't know the dangers of the destination. No, no matter, matter what, what God, God is, is with, with us. us. That, that is the promise and the hope. the hope. Let us step forward boldly, listening for God's call in our lives. Let, Let us, us place, place our, our trust, trust in God, God always. Let, Let us, us worship, worship God. God. Amen. Amen. of more Black Alabamians. Today, we will look at G's Bend Quilters Collective. What started as a necessity for warmth and comfort is now regarded as art in museums around the world. The G's Bend Quilters Collective in Boykin, Alabama has given its members recognition as creative folk artists and also provided many with a source of income. Mary Ann and China Petway travel across the United States teaching workshops to students with a desire to learn their style of quilt making. Now we will watch our video. Quilt ain't nothing but quilt. They will say, you know, oh Mary Ann, you make some real small stitches, or oh, you keep your line so straight. And I tell them it's a gift. I don't draw any line to try to follow the line. I said, that's too much work. Whatever happened, happened. I said, that's the art in it. And I don't know anything about art. My name is Mayor Ann Pitway. I'm the manager of the G's Being Quilt Collective. The first show they did in uh, Houston, then they went to New York to the Whitney. I was told they went to Mobile, the High Museum. I got a chance to go there. China and myself, we are most of the traveling are uh, doing workshops, teaching people how to uh, make quilts or our style. 
But I thank God for that because um, if they didn't want to uh, learn our style, then she and I won't be, you know, doing that much traveling at all. Oh, it, it means a lot to me because um, I started working here in 2006. And since that time, I finished paying for my house. Uh, I done bought a car and on the old one more payment on the van I got out there because of these quilts, because this is my own income. It is helping some of us in this community by making quilts, because a lot of ladies make their quilts at home, then they bring them here to be sold through here. We didn't have some from Japan, um, Hawaii. We didn't have a lot of different people from here, uh, you know, come to visit with us. When mom was teaching me, I didn't want to learn how, because see, I was young, I wanted to go play, and, but I thank God that mama taught me, she made me. See, we didn't have no beds to lay on, so they had to make quilts for us to lay on the floor and quilts to cover up on them. But see, I got the grand boys training, training them, and uh, I had two young girls, the other day came and asked me to teach them how to quilt. They said it's a dying art, so as long as I'm able to teach what I can teach, then I'm gonna teach it. People tell us we are famous, I don't feel it. <laughs> I'm still the same as I've always been. I try to be more loving and caring and respectful to other people because I want them to treat me with respect and I, you know, try to respect them. Al, may we prepare for the reading of the Gospel, which is taken from Mark, the 8th chapter, verses 31 through 38. I will be reading from the New International Version. Those who are able, Please stand. He then began to teach them that the Son of Man must suffer many things and be rejected by the elders, the chief priests, and the teachers of the law, and that he must be killed and after three days rise again. He spoke plainly about this, and Peter took him aside and began to rebuke him. But when Jesus turned and looked at his disciples, he rebuked Peter. Get behind me, Satan, he said. You do not have in mind the concerns of God, but merely human concerns. Then he called the crowd to him along with his disciples and said, whoever wants to be my disciple must deny themselves and take up their cross and follow me. For whoever wants to save their life will lose it, but whoever loses their life for me and for the gospel will save it. What good is it for someone to gain the whole world, yet forfeit their soul? Or what can anyone give in exchange for their soul? If anyone is ashamed of me and my words in this adulterous and sinful generation, the Son of Man will be ashamed of them when he comes in his Father's glory with the holy angels. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. I've been walking with my face turned to the sun. Weight on my shoulders, a bullet in. I got eyes in the back of my head Just in case I had to run I do what I can when I can while I can for my people While the clouds roll back and the stars fill the night That's when I'm gonna stand up Take my people with me together Moving towards 
Let us pray. Lord, we pray that you speak to us now by the power of your Spirit. Bless us in our hearing and the proclamation. In Christ's name, amen. amen. Last Sunday, we ended with the assurance that the Lord will give his angels charge of you. This week, we begin with a question. How much is your soul worth? How much is your soul worth? And is there a word from our Lord on how much your soul is worth? You know, our labor has a certain amount of worth to it. Right now, there's a struggle to get the $15 an hour minimum wage in order that people's labor may have a little bit more worth and have their needs taken care of in response to the work. The farm workers, poultry plant workers, meat packing plant workers, all of these are essential workers during the pandemic. How much is their labor worth? Teachers and Daycare workers, how much is their time worth? One day after setting Peter straight, you know, where Jesus said to him, get, get behind me, Satan. After setting Peter straight, Jesus called to him, his disciples and others who were around and began to teach them. And he said to them, whoever wants to be my disciple must deny themselves Tick up the cross and follow me. Reverend George Lee took up his cross and followed Jesus. George Lee was one of the first black people registered to vote in Humphrey County, Mississippi. He used his pulpit and his printing press to encourage people to vote. And when there were threats against his life, the police said to him, well, if, if, if you were just to stop doing these things, we'd probably be able to protect you, but he did not stop. Herbert Lee took up the cross. He worked with civil rights leader Bob Moses, helping black voters. And he was killed by a state legislator who claimed self-defense. And that legislator was never arrested. Viola Gregliuzzo took up the cross. A mother from Detroit came all the way to Alabama to help us during the Selma to Montgomery march. She would transport people from Selma to Montgomery. One day, a KKK Klansman came by, drove by her car, and shot her. Jimmy Lee Jackson took up the cross. Jimmy Lee was a young man who tried to keep the state troopers and others from beating up his grandfather and his mother. His death led to the Selma to Montgomery March, an eventual passage of the Voting Rights Act. Dietra Bonhoeffer took up the cross. You know, Bonhoeffer wrote a book called The Cost of Discipleship. Dee Breston in an article, Singing the Blues, 
Tell the story how Bonhoeffer, when he was visiting the United States for a number of years, he was disappointed that even professing Christians were not troubled by what they saw in terms of the injustices against uh, minorities. And, 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 but one day he went to an African-American church in Harlem. And when he got there, he felt such a kinship to the people because they were preaching the gospel the gospel of justice and, and fair play and right. You know, he, and I did not know that, I just discovered that from, from reading this article, that he spent four years, four years at that church in Harlem, and he was teaching Sunday school. After Bonhoeffer went back to Germany, Hitler became chancellor of Germany, and two days after Hitler became chancellor, Von Hoffa was on the radio and he, he was denouncing Hitler. A few years later, in 1945, Von Hoffa was executed. You see, Von Hoffa was part of the professing movement. It was a movement of Lutheran and evangelical pastors who had come together and said, and, and said that they will not allow the churches to be co-opted by the government for our purposes of propaganda, propaganda. He was killed April 9th, 1945, just two weeks, two weeks before the liberation of the Kim by the United, Meta, uh, United States forces. Jesus says in Mark 8:35, whoever wants to save their life will lose it, but whoever loses his life for my sake will save it. Von Hoffa knew that in giving up his life, he was really saving it. George Lee, Reverend George Lee understood that in giving up his life, he was really saving it. Herbert Lee understood that in giving up his life, he was really saving it. Greg, uh, Viola, Greg Leosa understood that in giving up her life, she was really saving it. Jimmy Lee Jackson understood that in giving up his life, he was really saving it, and so many more of both the ancient and modern civil rights uh, 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 persons who were on the front line, many of whom had to lose their life, understood that in giving up life, they were really saving it. And I will say a special thanks to Southern Poverty Law Center for keeping those stories alive. But how much are you willing to trade for your life, for your soul. The Greeks, the Greeks in their culture, had a distinct understanding of soul and body, and they saw those two things as separate. In their mind, the soul was the invaluable, it was the immortal, it was the unique, it was the, uh, the essence of the person, and their body wasn't that important. But not so with, Hebrew, with the Hebrews or the Jewish people. In their minds, getting all the way from Genesis, it's a whole person. The whole person makes up the soul. According to Holman Bible Dictionary, 755 times the word for soul, nepesh, is used. And then in the New Testament, we come across, because you know the New Testament reading in Greek, the Old Testament is in Hebrew. The New Testament, we come across that word psyche. psyche. Well, what it is, nepesh or psyche, both of those have the, basically the same understanding of soul, that the soul is the whole person, a living being. The Lord God formed man of the dust of the ground and breathed into him, or not into his nostril, the breath of life, and man became a living Soul, a living soul. And by the way, the soul is also used for animals as well. That whole sense of the being. But the soul and physical life is also feelings and the wishes and the will of the human being is also life essential. All of those things make up the soul. The soul is the whole person. What can anyone give in exchange for their soul? For that whole person? That's the question Jesus asks. Why can anyone give in exchange 
But if so, how much is your soul worth? How much is your soul worth? If your talents are worth so much, if your time is worth so much, if your energy is worth so much, if your job is worth so much, if your career is worth so much, if your experience is worth so much, or maybe your lack of experience is worth a little bit less, if your training is worth so much, how much is your soul worth? As I contemplated that question, I, it dawned on me that I had seen on the radio some time before, or I had heard, not seen, I had heard on the radio, a woman who had sung, who had been doing some singing. You know, I said to myself, if I check on Google, I can probably jog this memory up here a little bit. Jog it a little bit. And sure enough, I did that. And right, Rihanna Giddens, Rihanna Giddens popped up with a song, Purchasers, Purchaser Option. In her song, she tells a story that when she was reading a book, there was an ad for a young woman, an ad for the sale of a one. Why don't I let her tell you the story? We'll take a minute for you to hear from her and hear a little bit of this song. And so this song was inspired um, after reading or looking at a, an advertisement in a book for a human being, for a young woman. Um, and, it, and it just kind of talked about her and she's 22, young, good worker, that kind of thing. And at the end of it, it was, just, it was an, as, if, as if in an afterthought, it said she has with her a nine-month-old baby who is at the purchaser's option. And it just kind of made me really sad. And then the way I deal with all the, the stuff inside is I write now. So this song came out of that, thinking about what her life was like and how lucky I am. Shall I keep him? Twill come the day when I'll be weeping. But how can I love him any less? You can take my body, you can take my. marvelous singing and writing and composition really. That's, uh, that presentation was filmed at the Augusta Heritage Center 
Old Time and Vocal Week in West Virginia. But the song portrays a young girl who did not have control of her life, a control of her surroundings or her circumstances. They could forcibly take everything from her, but she refused to give them her soul, her life. And she kept her love for her baby. We, many of us, are at a better place. Rihanna attested to that in her opening remarks. But the battle for the soul continues. You know, the world, the world will threaten to take our stuff away. The world will threaten to take your stuff away if you don't play the games, if you don't play in that sandbox the way they want for you to play. The sad part is that some people are willing to give up their soul. Things of the world are good. God is giving us so many things in this world, so many things that we have. The Lord gave this to us. But when it comes to God, it's good. But let us never try to trade our soul in exchange for it. How much is your soul worth? The world wants your soul. Don't trade it for anything. Live a life worthy of the calling, the high calling of God, of Jesus. If anyone is ashamed, Jesus said of me, in my world, in this adulterous and sinful generation, the Son of Man will be ashamed of them. Don't be ashamed of the following Jesus. The world can take so many things from you, but it cannot take away your soul. Not unless you give it. The words of Jesus are as relevant today as they were on the day that Jesus gave it to the disciples and others who had gathered with him. Those words are as relevant. They are relevant. We are told that life can be better if we could somehow avoid the right stuff, if we could somehow live in the right neighborhood, if we could somehow have the right jobs, if we could somehow have our children go to the right school system, if we could somehow have the right salary, all of these things, the world of promising things. If God does not give it, don't take it. You can take my body, you can take my blood, but not my soul. You can take my car, you can take my career, you can take my clothing, but not my soul. You can take my money, you can take my memory, you can take my moments, but not my soul. You can take my home, you can take my hopes, you can take my health, but not my soul. My soul is not for sale, and neither is your soul. Your soul. No one can take your soul from you unless you give it. Don't give it up. Don't give it up. It belongs to Jesus. Don't give it up. How much is your soul worth? All of the things of this world cannot purchase your soul. Your soul is worth the love of Jesus. Nothing less. Nothing less. God bless you as you give your soul, your life, your nepesh, your psyche to the total and complete control of Jesus.
give and it will be given to you. A good measure, pressed down, shaken together, and running over will be poured into your lap. For with the measure you use, it will be measured to you. Luke 6, 38. If you have been blessed by this service and would like to sow a seed into this ministry, please visit our giving page. The information is provided on the slide coming across your screen.
Thank you for being a part of our worship. Pray God's blessing upon you. Knowing that your soul rests in the arms of Jesus, your life, your whole person. And now may the blessing of God the Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit rest, rule, and abide with you now henceforth. Please go in peace. We hope you were blessed by today's worship service. We encourage our St. Paul family, friends, and those looking for a church home to join us each week for our virtual church experience. Please like, share, and subscribe to our Facebook page and YouTube channel. Thank you and have a blessed week.